What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So this week we're gonna be working on my 99 MB Miata. So if you know from the first video or the first video I ever filmed, you would know I have a high compression 1.8 motor ready to drop into this car, but I got it all tore apart at the moment since I found out that the front end seal was leaking, pretty much pissing everywhere. So got that all tore apart and laid it out on the table here, but kind of pushed it off. Never ordered up any of the parts. So since it's the first week of the year, ordered up those parts and I think they're gonna be like a week or two so in the meantime thought I'd actually start working on the car getting this thing ready for the new motor to get dropped in and actually taking out the old motor because this thing is still a running driving car so I do like just pulling out the motor leaving the trains in the car I find it a lot easier and it's pretty simple just unbolting the bull ho bell housing bolts right from the top and bottom and then you can just pull the motor right out that's kind of the easy way I figured out how to do it but I still need to figure out how to at least put a Miata on four jack stands because when I did the motor swap on this car, I just did two in the front and had the whole front up. It was pretty easy, but it would be a little bit easier having this whole thing up in the air, especially since I got to pull the whole exhaust off and I got a whole new dual exit axle back ready to get dropped into this car. So I'm not really too sure what I want to do with this car actually because it is a stance car right now. It's pretty much dumped on its ass as low as it'll go. It really won't drive out of my driveway. And when I was trying to drive it around recently, kind of did that to the fender, kind of buckled it up pretty good and messed up the tire pretty bad, but tires are already messed up as they are. So I ain't really worried about that, but this fender is pretty much toast at this point. Luckily this dent was already there when I got the car. So pretty much needed a fender at this point anyways. But I'm still trying to figure out if I want to keep it a stance car or make it like a full blown track car because I figured out that these cars will fit 245s no problem. And I was talking to a couple buddies in my local area that do track days and they said that this car would fit into a perfect class since it's going to have just a chip DCU, like a chip stock DCU and basic bolt-ons on the motor like an intake and exhaust. So it would fit in a good class up there and probably do pretty good. So kind of leaning towards making it towards a track car but at the same time I do like my stance cars but I also have this thing already so do I need to you guys let me know in the comments what you want to see maybe just drop this thing on its ass and drag frame everywhere and have a little fun with the high compression motor revving the hell out of it or actually jacking it up a little bit putting some big tires on it and having some fun on the track with it so I do want to get this thing up on some wood I have some wood ramps right there get the front end up so I can at least jack up the front, get the front on some jack stands, and then I can jack up the rear, get the rear on some jack stands, and actually have this thing off all fours. So I got the Miata up on four jack stands and it actually went pretty smooth. I know once you get these first two under and start jacking up the rear, it can get a little tippy at three points, but this thing actually stayed pretty solid. For any guys that are wondering how to lift up a Miata on four jack stands, once I got the wood under the front, I was able to fit the jack in the two by four under the subframe. And the two by four is just a little bit wider than the subframe, so didn't have to worry about it crushing anything. Jacked it straight up in the subframe. You just gotta be careful of it not slipping out because that'll go straight in your oil pan. It would be a very bad time, but went up pretty smooth. Put the jack stands on the pinch welds. I know when I did it on this car, I put the jack stands under the frame and got in the way of the engine hoist, pulling the motor in and out. So put it on the pinch welds to make it a little bit easier to get those legs in and out. And then once the front was up, I was able to get to the rear. The tow hook was a little too low for me to get the jack under. So jacked it up by the pinch weld. Put a piece of wood under the tow hook and then once I dropped it back down, I was able to get to the diff, 
jack it up straight from the diff and then put the jack stands under the pinch holes as well it would kind of give me a little bit more room to pull the exhaust off so now that it's up in the air i do want to pull the hood off just to get me a little bit more light into the engine bay and i think i'm gonna start working on some of the easy and annoying stuff like pulling the intake the cat back exhaust off and then maybe draining the radiator and pulling this out because that should be the only fluid i really need to drain i think i'm going to leave the power steering in the car ac in the car and then oil can pretty much just stay in the engine since this is just going to be pulled out and sold at this point and then trans is going to stay in the car so that should be pretty easy so i'm going to start working on those couple bits and then you can kind of start working on getting the engine all tore out and unbolted and get it ready to yank out of there what's up guys so it's actually the next day now i got some work done on the miata last night got the intake off and then i pulled the radiator out as well and then i drained the coolant you gotta love this chalky milk that came out of it luckily i'm not using this radiator or this engine anymore so ain't gotta worry about really flushing this all back out and worrying about it contaminating again i do have a new koya rad sitting over near my desk over there ready for this car I uh, also ended up getting the cat back exhaust off got it high back there and i also got the axle back off as well just made it a little bit easier because i'm gonna end up putting the dual tip on there and then i started working on getting these three bolts off that split the two pieces of the header together for some reason they do not want to come off i got one off but the other two are just stuck on there forever so i got pissed off last night and just called it a night so today probably start working on just pulling off the header from the head make it a little bit easier get the egr hose off there and then i uh, she's gonna start just working on a little bit of everything i want to get both the power steering ac compressor off i want to start getting a lot of this harness out of the way and then getting some of these hoses off and pretty much it should just be bell housing bolts and motor mounts pull the starter out and this thing should be ready to lift up and out so i'm gonna get to work working on that and this should be pretty quick i always wanted to do one of these so let's see how this goes so that's looking a lot better finally got that header out of there leaving that three bolt section on the bottom there really made it a pain in the ass to get it to snake out between the steering shaft and the block there it took me like an hour just to get that thing out but finally got it and i was able to work on everything else got the power steering pump and ac compressor off there just kind of got it zip tied off to the side and i started working on some of the wiring got all the wiring pulled out of there just got it pulled up to the top there pulled off some of these hoses and i ended up pulling off the charcoal canister too just because it's already capped off in that motor so it's like why not just remove it and then i got all the bell housing bolts off got the starter out of there got all the wiring out for the alternator and the oil pressure sensor so everything's clear there and then i got all the motor mounts loosened up so this thing is pretty free in there so pretty much ready just to get it yanked out of here get a chain on her i do need to fix my engine hoist up a little bit because i've been sitting outside for a few years since i've done the motor swap on that car so i do need a new cylinder on it doesn't really like to pick up motors too much and just likes to slowly drop them down it's a little sketchy so i'm gonna buy a new cylinder for that and then i do need to get a little tool for the fuel line because that has like a special quick disconnect i don't have that tool so i'll pick that up at t as well tomorrow but i also started making a little list of some of the parts i know i need like i want to do some solid motor mounts i want to do a stainless steel clutch line because if you guys know in the factory well, i might be able to show you kind of see it there but that's the slave right there and it's got a big coiled up little line that wraps around a bunch and it's the biggest pain in the ass to get these things to bleed with that thing so i really want to do a stainless steel clutch line to replace that i want to do an i need to get a 1.6 upper radio hose because this is going to be a coolant reroute kit on this car so the, ho the tube's going to come out around here and then on the 1.6s they have like an s-shaped hose so it should be perfect just to go around and right into the radiator there and then i also just need to get some clamps for those some new spark plugs for the new motor i do want to pick up an engine plate and some engine risers for this thing since right now it's a stance car and the oil band's literally level with the subframe so raise up the motor a little bit and then get a skid plate that actually bolts into the bottom of the subframe because it's like a u-shape that would fit a plate perfectly so that i at least save this oil pan if i do keep this thing a stance car but if anything it's nice to have even if this thing ended up being a track car so i do want to pick those up i think i'm gonna start looking maybe get some of these parts ordered up just so i can get them on their way I actually start working on this thing instead of kind of pushing it off for a couple months or so i really want to get this thing done quick and actually start driving it so um, tomorrow get those new parts for our, the engine hoist and that little quick disconnect for the fuel line and then we can get this thing yanked out of here so 
Catch you guys tomorrow. What's going on guys? So it's the next day. Ran down the Harbor Freight and picked me up a new cylinder for my engine hoist and got that all set up. I ended up needing to take off the bumper and the bumper support and the headlights as well so I can get the hook kind of way in the middle of the motor so it should be pretty easy just to lift it straight up and out. I'm definitely gonna have to like slip it out of the trains a little bit so shouldn't be too bad. I'm just waiting for my buddy to get here to help me out with that. But in the meantime, I'm gonna start working on that fuel line. I did pick up the little tool for it, so it should be pretty quick. It's just one little simple, quick disconnect. But I know these things can be kind of a pain in the ass sometimes, so I'll get that figured out. Hopefully it'll be pretty easy and fuel won't go everywhere. So we'll see how that goes. But once my buddy gets here and that fuel line's off, I should just be able to pull out the six motor mount bolts I got left in there. I got them all loosened up already. Just gotta pull them all the way out. And then this thing should just be able to come straight up and out. So probably be, do a time lapse of that. So as you guys just saw, my buddy Tark came over and gave me a hand pulling the motor out of the MB and it came out pretty smooth. We ended up just bending one of the fins on the pressure plate, so that's what you saw him hammering in the little time lapse. But got her set down on a little four wheel dolly, a couple pieces of wood under the motor, so this thing's solid and got to worry about going anywhere and actually makes it super easy to move it around. Same setup I have under that motor and since the shop's really not that big, it makes it easy to kind of push these motors around, move them wherever I need them. But now that the motor's out, getting a good idea of what I'm looking at in here. I really wish you guys can smell this, like smell the garage and the car, because this car had such a bad clutch, it's kind of the whole reason I'm doing this. And for the price I got that motor for, it would have just bought me a brand new clutch. So I just bought the whole motor, why not? I get the upgrades. And since this clutch was so bad, you literally couldn't even drive it in like any gear, more than 25% throttle. And now that it's exposed, it just stinks up the whole garage and it just smells like burnt clutch. And now looking into the transmission, it is just filled with grime and it's like a half inch thick. So now that I see that and then see the subframe, it's pretty gross as well. I wasn't really planning on pressure washing the engine bay and doing all that because then I actually take it off the stands, push it outside and then deal with having to push it back inside. But this thing is just too gross to me even like keep working on it without cleaning it. So I'm going to end up just dropping out the stands and cleaning it all out. I was just going to tape up a few things and clean up some of this like wiring, relocate a few things. But I guess I'll just clean it all up, do it all once, do it right the first time so I don't have to do it again or even like have it in my mind in the future. But shout out to Mas Miata. I actually ended up getting the parts I ordered. I ordered these like three days ago. So got a valve cover gasket, got the front main seal and an exhaust gasket for that motor over there. So I think in next week's video, I'm gonna start working on that, getting that motor all back together. And it actually does need a pretty good cleanup because from the front main seal leaking, this shit is just oily as hell. So I wanna get all the parts cleaned up, get that motor cleaned up. So it's actually like a nice fresh clean motor to go in, especially once the engine bay is all cleaned up. It'll be a nice fresh clean bay with a fresh motor. So I do want to get some of these parts actually starting to order up because I'm going to need the engine mounts and like the skid plate would be super easy to do right now because you can kind of see that U shape I was talking about but skid plate sits like right in there and bolts through the little lip on the edge and it's perfect. So that's really what I want to get ordered up but you know money's tight, your boy's broke so if you guys want to actually support your boy I do have some stickers. I got my Mr. Pickle sticker there and I actually have some window peeker stickers. Got one in the trunk here, but I do have them in black and white. And then I also sell some big banners if you guys should really want to support me. But I would appreciate it if you at least check it out at dopeuppickupsperformance.com. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was just a quick little video pulling the motor out of the MB. Finally getting some work done on it, especially it's the first of the year. So time to get some projects done. And I don't want this thing sitting on jack stands forever. So I'm going to try to work my best, get this thing done as quick as possible, get those parts ordered up. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, I hope you like, comment, subscribe, and peace out.